I'm Jason. And I'm Jules. And we, we doing, doing bars. Hey. Pick the right one. <laughs> oh, I'm over here. Yeah. So we've got our second. Yeah. Thanks for uh, sticking around and checking out what arouses us. <laughs> did, that, did that work? Oh, did you let us know if it did anything for you? Uh huh. Was there a quickening? Yeah. There was, could be only one in your pants? Was it when they were playing basketball? <laughs> Tonight we're going to be talking about Betty Blue, another another recommendation. Mm-hmm. It's on that mega list of recommendations. Yeah, I'd never heard of it. And I said, let's do let's do that one. That one, uh, I've heard of it. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be a good movie. Yeah. Which is not what happened with uh, Red Shoe Diaries. No, and it's, it's funny because as this one started, I was like, oh, this is, this is a... A skinny. Yeah. Right? And then I'm like, oh, no, this is a contemplative film. And I would like to say I I, I, I like Red Shoe more in retrospect because I've got some great clips out of it. Electromagnetic vibratory transmission forces. Wow. And we have our appreciation for Bridget Baco and mm-hmm. Billy Worth. Mm-hmm. It's not a very good movie. No, but it is nice that we can come away with something. Yeah. If not but this movie, <clears throat> mm-hmm. this movie is working a little bit hard to make something happen. Yeah, I had one moment where I was like, "This is the hottest, <laughs> quite possibly ever." Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I punched a hole in my wall. Okay. A very small one with my fingers, of, with my pinky. You poked a hole. I poked a hole in my wall. Yeah. And I. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It smells bad down here now. Huh? So we watched Betty Blue. It's uh, we we saw the director's cut. It's from 1986. It's a, I think it's but, a very well respected movie. And I guess the the director's cut is what is out there. I found it on the Internet Archive, and I was like, "What the fuck? Three hours? Mm-hmm. Why is this three hours? I picked this. We have to, I have to watch it tonight. He has to watch it tonight. There's not really any going back at the last minute there, or stopping." No. Of the two movies that I watched on the same evening, the other one specifically, I was just like, man, can I walk away? We, we can't start walking away or we'll never stop. <laughs> we made a blood pact. Under the blood moon! Look at the blood moon, son! Jules brought these over. This episode is brought to you by Midnight Moon Moonshake. Apple pie flavor. Bing. All right, Midnight Moon Moonshake. Uh, nothing tells me apple pie like milk. Grazie. Oh, that's nice. All right. You got some facts about old Betty Blue? I do. Is there a number of how many boners it gave people since it came out in 1986? No. And is there an increased amount of boners in the director's cut? If you, I mean, there's a shitload of uh, floppy peen. Excusez-moi, là, vous êtes assis sur mon fut, là. Ah, pardon. This movie maybe respect men's penises so much less. Oh, yeah. I never really gave it a ton of thought, mm-hmm. but I was like, yeah, cocks are cool, right? Mm-hmm. And then this guy's just walking around with that flaccid dick all the time, and I'm like, they're so silly. When she calls it a warm little slug, it's just ridiculous. And she kisses it. You think that was in the or- original cut? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Now we got to watch the original cut. <laughs> Hit me with them facts. All right. Uh, well, there is a tagline for this, and it's uh, really dumb. The kind that I hate. Who is she talking to? I don't know. Who are you talking to? Police. Oh. oh. She's on the phone oh. with her mom. That makes sense. A daring new film from the director of Diva. Couldn't, you know. D- I think Diva was a, a big deal. Sure, but talk about this one. No. What? This movie is about this. I mean, I don't know. I Commercial. Don't really All know. right. But okay. it had a worldwide gross of $2 million. Since 1986, I guess. I, I, I got a tagline for you. Yeah, yeah. Big big old boobies. Mm-hmm. Do you like pubic hair? Yeah. Yeah, what would be a tagline for this? Well, Careful, we'll... kid. You'll poke your eye out. Hey. Uh, during the early days of Netflix's DVD service, uh, this was the number one requested foreign language film. This is the only other fact I'm going to give you. Uh, when, it was, when the movie was shot, Beatrice Dahl? Dolly? Dahl? BT. She was in real life recently married to the painter uh, Jean Francois Dahl. Dolly. They met in a club uh, before she ever even thought about acting. She was 19, he was 25. But after she started 
um, making movies and becoming more and more famous, she said everywhere that they would go, people always wanted to talk to me and they didn't even know who he was, mm. which um, led to their uh, breakup. Did he poke his eye out? He did try to kill himself months later, <laughs> um, but he survived. Good. So maybe. I'm glad to hear he made it through. You know what? I'd be glad to hear. The rhythm of the night? That's synapses. Petit blue. Indentured handyman Zor- Zorg. Jean Hughes Anglade. Anglade meets Betty, Beatrice Dale, a wild spirit sex pot roughly 10 years his junior. Sick of Zorg's controlling an incredibly peculiar master, name of unknown, Betty convinces Zorg to move to Paris, where they can stay with her friend Lisa, Consuelo de Velanda, while Betty tries to get Zorg's novel published. Although convinced she is too ugly to be loved, Lisa soon meets Eddie, Gerard Darman, a local pizza man, and the beginning of this movie becomes more bearable. The four become a family until Eddie's mom dies and leaves him her home and piano shop, which she entrusts to Betty and Zorg, who try to make a go with the domesticity, but a madness storm is brewing that threatens to derail their happiness and turn the whole situation into a real Jerry-type scenario. <laughs> Will their love survive and surpass the test of time? Shit gets hard. Especially when Betty Blue. Red Shoe was like, mm, here's some sexy music and some... Turn off the lights, get your wine. Get in the bubble bath mm-hmm. and have some thoughts that aren't about penetration, but maybe the lead up to it. Yeah. This movie starts with some real good fucking... Some raw dogging. <laughs> it's super hot right off the bat, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's on top, but she is really pumping those hips. Well, and not only that, but there's several moments uh, from the, when it first begins, somewhere in between in the middle there, and then later on, one of them actually looks like they reach down to like do a reinsertion, uh-huh. which is just like... And I'm pretty sure she's like rubbing the clitoral mm-hmm. area? Clitoral area? Yeah. You, would you, would you? Oh, my goodness. Now, as somebody who's never had sex, I found this quite intriguing. Yeah. And I hope that when it happens for me, that it is exciting like this movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was quite embarrassed uh, shooting that. It really? was her first movie. She didn't realize the full crew would be on set. Man. And, and they had to just keep, you know. And take... It is minutes. It, isn't it like mainly a, a single shot for a lot of it just yeah, kind of going in? Yeah. It, it, uh, yeah, it, uh, it goes on for a while. <laughs> and she's loud. I was clutching my pearls. So a boner check-in right away. I mean, I'm thinking, yikes, okay, this is going to be some some softcore. My mouth was hanging open, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then it ends. Yeah. And the and movie he, starts. And then he's uh, fucking around with a pot of chili. It's So it's unclear what his job is, right? I mean, he's sort of the handyman, but... I guess. You know, I watched the first, like, 45 minutes of this movie on the Internet Archive, and the subtitles were terrible. It was, like, every couple of sentences you would Mm -hmm. get a sentence. Mm -hmm. Uh, As soon as I rented it on YouTube and switched over, the movie was infused with personality and information it had been lacking. So, I'm missing a lot of information from the beginning. Because he's driving from town, coming back to the bungalow or... uh, community mm-hmm. i mean it seems like a sea of those yeah, fucking it, well and it, yeah it seems like buildings. a seaside area is it seaside it's on the beach right? it is on it the beach like on is the that beach. where they go back to but now there's bigger buildings he's driving from the town to the bungalows in that car and he's blasting into the siren and he's saying something that's coming or something like a storm and i'm thinking oh is he like is this like a flood at risk area and he's the local I don't know, alert guy. But it never really seems to come up again. And then the guy's like, paint all these other houses. And yeah. But yeah, so he's dancing around with Chili after he comes home from his, you know, siren blaring joyride. And uh, Betty Blue shows up. She does, and she's wearing just an apron. Yeah. Right? That's pretty great. Yeah. And uh, they kiss, <laughs> and he's touching on it. He always touches her tits. And so, yeah, they're horned and... The landlord, I think, comes by and is like, dude, you slept in. How he just, you... like, straight up comes in there and is staring at them while they're naked and yeah. asleep. Réveille-toi! Qui c'est lui? I thought he was like a bomb or something. And then he walks, the main character, Zorg, I forgot his name for a minute, Zorg, like, walks up to him while he's sitting down with, like, his cock in his face. He to, does, yeah. To get his... 
pants from where that guy is sitting. Yeah. And Betty Blue is like, I hate this man. Get this man out of here. It felt a little psychosexual, his hold over him. Much like- The um, boss? Yeah. Yeah, the boss, yeah. It was weird. The well, vibes well, are that, just weird. Yeah, that, well, that guy, is, he's, I mean, what's up with that look on his face? He looks like fucking Otis from Andy Griffith show. Yeah, right. He's got a five o'clock. How busted up Columbo suit. It makes me feel weird, Jason. Boner check in. <laughs> this is fucking table. In order to not lose his job, he agrees to paint what looks like a, uh, just thousands of buildings. I think it's probably like ten. And she agrees to do it with him, but she doesn't realize it's because the guy asked him to. Because when she finds out you told him to do this, she gets pissed. It's like he just thought he was gonna. He works for him. Like what the fuck. The guy, I'm sure he's getting paid. And, yeah, she throws paint on the guy's car. Putain de vent, ça rend fou. Et je suis sûr qu'elle le regrette. Voilà. She keeps throwing shit out the window. She's crazy, dude. I, when she starts acting wild, I couldn't even fucking believe it. Now, is the paint after she shoves him off the railing? She, like, pushes the guy's boss into the, the wood railing and he goes off into a dirt pile. I think it is after. I think the paint thing is uh, he gives him another chance and then this time Betty Blue attacks him. Okay. And boy, this is where things really kick off. She steals her boyfriend's car mm -hmm. after the boss leaves. Yeah. And takes off for like the entire afternoon. And even though she's clearly out of her mind and dangerous, I guess that pussy's so good because he's just like, I'm thinking about Betty Blue. Well, he's like eh, what, 32. She's 20. 19? She turns 19 later she in the movie. She turns 20. She turns 20 later yeah, so in the movie. She's 18, 19. I don't know how long this is supposed to go. It feels like it's supposed to be a while, especially once they yeah. start doing the piano stuff. But And also, I fucked up the timeline. The time she steals the car and he's fantasizing about her. Not when this happens. Because what happens is she throws all the shit out the windows. Yeah. And then he goes to work for the day. He does. And then he comes home and everything is outside. And well, he's painting and she's throwing it out the window. And the old man's looking with binoculars. Well, there goes that record I borrowed you. Is he really saying that? Yeah. I didn't have those in my subtitles, yeah, let me man. tell you. But he gets back, and she's holding, like, what, a kerosene lantern? No, 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 because the pivotal thing happens uh, where she is throwing shit out of the house the first time, grabs a box, and he goes, no, 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 and she it falls out, and it's his manuscript. Mm -hmm. And she sits down at the kitchen table and reads it the whole way through. That's when she steals the car and leaves. And he's on the ladder just like, shit. And then she comes back at dusk with bags, and he's like, yes. She's not leaving me. Oh, this is when she makes him the dinner, and he's like, is mm -hmm. it my birthday? Was it duck confit? I thought it was mussels. There was mussels, but she was making duck, too. And she goes, yeah, I'm going to get you published, Jack Rabbit. Mm -hmm. And then I think the next time he sees her, yeah, she's got the... She's got the lantern. Bon, tu viens? No. She tosses in just the place. It's a, a she combustible explosion. Burns that shit down. And he just like runs off with her. Yeah. They're like, okay, we got to get out of here now because it's a crime. I think even back in the 80s that if you committed a crime in like one area of the country, um, they will they will take you to jail in the other part of the country. Probably. Because you, you did a bad thing. Mm -hmm. He could have gotten a, a girlfriend um, that was not crazy. And they, they go, go to Paris, with, I think, right? I think so. And or some larger metropolitan. But it's just Paris or nothing. Right. I think. And it's it's pretty when they get there. Yeah, they're by the tube. And, uh, and they meet up with that lady who says she's too ugly Lisa. for her love. Yeah, it's weird because her husband's dead. And I guess she's running a hotel that yeah. nobody's staying in. It seems like they're going to kick off a three-way. It, it seems like they're going to have a relationship because they're like hugging and they bring her in, and she's like, a kiss is for me, too. Oh, for me? Yeah. And she looks like Debbie, Debbie Mazar. Mm -hmm. And I'm... And Olivia Coleman a little bit. Mark. Hi, Sophie. You know her? Uh-huh, yeah. I'm his wife. I'm thinking, yeah. This is... You're down to clown? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, especially once Eddie shows up, I'm like, oh. Do you want to get in the pile with all four of them? <laughs> silk Eddie's robes and <laughs> silk robes and wine for everybody. Oh, man. No. Whatever. What are they? <laughs> 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 the 
throughout yeah. the whole movie, this guy's banging glasses and shooting seltzer and vodka. I was or gonna something? say, I at least know it's seltzer. Some you must drink it. Drink it in one shot. A- aperitif or something. He would get know. mad at you for not being able to slam a shot. Mm-hmm. You tell him about your medical affliction that doesn't <laughs> allow you to slam shots. I'd slam him for him. <laughs> <laughs> and but so she yeah when they're walking one day him and her right before he mentions that he's a plumber. She's got the dog. She's throwing the stick. And he goes, you ever think about getting a man? I mean, what's up with y'all? And she goes, well, it's tough. I mean, basically, what with the way that I look or my looks, I'm thinking, girl, what are you talking about? She's just like a pinch goofy looking. Yeah. A little but that's like a girl you frail, hang out with her for like two hours. You're like, I like you. I like you quite yeah, a bit. I mean, that's what, yeah. <laughs> By the end of this movie, I was like, yeah, this is pretty good. She's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hang out at the hotel with her. And uh, so then all of a sudden, yeah, she brings home Eddie, who's um, a little Danny Houston-ish. Mm-hmm. But like French, I guess. But he feels, I don't know, Lebanese. Or, uh, the first night, him and Zorg party hard. A little too much laughing. Laughing. Because they, they're getting so fucking drunk. They yeah. Just, but... Every time they party, they're just slamming shots. Mm-hmm. This guy fucking rules, yeah. man. I want to party with this guy. Yeah. This guy says, hey, man, you're in your mid to late 40s. You're still cool. Right. Yeah. And and throughout this entire time, Betty's getting no replies for all the publishers she sent the manuscript to because she typed it. He wrote it. It's weird because she's uh, passionate, I would say. But I, I throughout the majority of this film, I never got crazy. A little. She burned down a house. Anger management issues. Yeah, you know, but not just like things are telling her to do this. Or no, true. You but know what at I mean? one point, he, it's almost like he's implying like once a month for seven days, she goes crazy. And when it is time for your period, hold on to your f-ing hat. <laughs> That's typical male chauvinist asshole guy. Yeah, you might be like, her emotions are a little more intense that she doesn't feel good. She's 20 and it's super sexy. I yeah. mean, not she burned down a house and she slashes people. Yeah, yeah. Which she ends up doing. Mm. Both of those things. Yeah. I'll let you mention it. So they're partying with him. They're mm-hmm. giggling too much, you say. Yeah. Zorg's talking about how he's a science fiction writer. They become like best. Well, friends. he keeps telling him he's a different type of a writer throughout their whole escapade. What kind of a writer is he? He goes, "What do you write?" He goes, "Oh, historical fiction, erotic stories." Yeah, I. It's un. Uh, it's never divulged just to specifically what he's writing. He is Philip K. Dick, Ex- and he is writing to androids dream of electric sheep i had to think about that i almost called it blade runner hey but there's one rejection letter that delves into a critical analysis of the manuscript that is the only thing that shines light on what he's writing isn't he like this is the opposite of a book it's the you went out of your way to write an unbook basically or something like that yeah (laughs) And that's the so you have to assume it's some sort of a mad ramblings, probably not character based, just some sort of a bizarre manifesto. Or I don't know, but I mean, a period of time is going by. They work for her, him one night. Actually, this is psychotic. She Pizza stabs guy. a lady in an arm with a her arm stabs a lady in her arm with a fork. Can I take you guys through what happens here? They work at the guy's restaurant is it a pizza restaurant it is it's a pizza restaurant so betty blue has kind of a troublesome table they're just kind of like slightly obnoxious they want well here's the thing when she's ordering the pizza she orders a margarita and and asks are there anchovies on that Mm -hmm. to which betty replies yes is there ham and i think she says i can add ham so then when the pizza comes out with ham and the woman's like there's ham on here it's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you ordered ham. Oh, okay. Is the issue. And uh, so the Zorg goes, oh, don't worry, I'll get, I'll take care of it. He takes it back, he scrapes everything off the crust. And they got this bucket of shit. Il prend le saucisson qui transpire, le tomate, des spaghetti aux oeufs bien frais. It's just the slop trash. And Julian, I felt like I was going to throw up and I had to look away from the screen. Oh, really? Yeah, he goes through there and he picks out the grossest shit he can find, wilted rotten lettuce, mm-hmm. uh, random bits of spaghetti, other things, yep. 
throws a bunch of cheese on it. Looks nice when the cheese is on it. Cooks it. That lady is eating it with cheese is glopping all over. There's far too much sauce. The sauce didn't exist throughout that whole pizza making process. So I'm wondering, did they just dump sauce on it after they cooked it? Mm. Did they even cook it? Yeah, because... It's, hot it's just a from big the butt. globule of cheese that's in multitudes of different phases of melting and falling and congealing. And she loves it, though. Yeah. Right? But then, for some reason, she's pissed. She's upset with the service about Betty Blue at that the too. end. Yeah, because yeah. Betty Blue was talking some junk. But the guy's like, don't worry, baby, you hot. And he's trying to calm the, the customers down and Betty down. And, like, shit is heated, and Betty just grabs a fork and sticks that lady in the arm. In her bicep, yeah. That shit is crazy. It is. It's like a huge escalation and a real red flag. This chair, just as comfortable as last time. I, you know what Why I said put a pillow on while here? I was watching this? Yeah. What? Yeah. Do you think a pillow would help? I don't know. Keep what talking hurts? while I go get a pillow. What hurts? Yeah. The chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, Eddie's not concerned uh, for some odd reason. Um, and then all of a sudden when they're partying one night, he gets a phone call because his mother is dead. And he goes, I got to fucking go back. He puts on a naked woman tie. But you change. You change. She goes, this is your only black tie. It is, it is. And Zorg's like, yo, man, you're never going to be able to get there in time in the state that you're in. We'll all go. So Zorg's driving 451 miles in one night. What the fuck kind of name is Zorg? Uh, I don't know. I'm like, is he a 1980s Atari game? Is he the villain from Toy Story? Are they sitting sh- Shibboleth? Is he Jewish? <laughs> that? Shiva? Yeah, that too. Shibboleth? Yeah. Seder? They're there, and Zorg's tired, and he falls down, and they're like, shh, and he leaves, and then he finds out that she has a piano store, and they're playing piano. This is disrespectful. That old-ass lady's got the piano store? Mm-hmm. Who else works there? Nobody. And he goes, hey, check it out, y'all. Um, she left me this house and store. You want us to run the piano store, and we can live here for free? Yeah, and he goes, yeah, why don't you tell Betty? She'll love that. And he waits. And then in the next room you hear it go, yee! That sounds very good. And so now they're, honestly, fuck, man, yeah, I'd do that. Run the, yeah, yeah, why Why not? Apparently why there's no run? need to hack, actually make or have money, right? The butcher, you just go into the store and he just gives you stuff. So they're running that shop, getting, and that, getting that food from, they, they call him the albino redhead, right? They do. He's not albino. No, he is not. He's like maybe a tiny bit light skin. His red hair is not that pronounced. No, he's, he's just, just a like the white guy, guy with. Slightly reddish hair. I'm like albino. <laughs> this is the guy, dude. What the hell are you talking about? Fucking Greg. What's his name? Do you know his name? Bob. Yeah, they're selling pianos and they're living the life together. At one point, he also buys a, a, a small or a large parcel of land. Yeah. With a house on it that they never with, go back to. With a collapsed roof. Yeah, it's a shithole. Segment missing. I know. He's like, look at it. She's like, it's the most perfect place I've ever seen. The land is awesome. Mm-hmm. That it was her birthday. Sorry, by the way. Cool to have a house there. Mm-hmm. That does not look like somebody somewhere you would live in. But don't they spend the night in there by the fireplace? Because they like are naked by the fireplace. That's true, they do. But it's like, yeah, like they're in the chateau. How many times have they fucked since we started the movie? We got, I mean, we, we got the opening thing. We got where she kisses his uh, penis. Yeah. Well, he's passed out and yep. calls it a warm little slug. Yeah. I feel like there is more. She's grinding on him uh, once, I think. And then there's not a lot of they sex. do it. They do it off screen when they drive up into the hills, right? Where they where their house is, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He touches her breasts a lot. He puts mm-hmm. his hand between her thighs quite a bit. Yeah. Um, That's where the uh, vagina is. But the hottest scene yeah. for me. Okay. Uh, I agree. I was thinking about it <laughs> this morning and last night. Yeah. He is over at Bob's. Yeah. Um, and Betty's there, too. Mm-hmm. And they're all going somewhere, I think, or eating something. I think they're hanging out there. Yeah. And 
Zorg comes into the room. I forget the character's name. His Bob's wife. Bob's wife is called Annie, played she's, by Clement Clementine Solari. She's breastfeeding uh, their baby, who yeah. is like a month old. He's tiny. She like she's. I think she. I think she said it's been a month since she gave birth. Yeah, that's right. And she's. And he's Bob's not banging away on Darla. I don't think she says that yet, but she's she has zorg rubbing her tit and so she's let me talking paint this about how you. full of milk they are and how it hurts zorg like, just comes up mm-hmm. and he is just oh hey you know he's not taken aback or disgusted by he's, this woman's breastfeeding looking. it's just france yeah he's so he sees a baby yeah and then he goes uh oh, hungry and she goes yeah boy my nipples are so hard it almost hurts and she's got the baby on her left breast and she just fucking heaves out her right breast and it's massive and i'm like oh my god and then he goes oh goldfish <laughs> yeah, yeah and he goes over there and, you you got to get out of there before the point of no return. Something's yeah. going to happen. This is not a good situation. No, absolutely Even if, Even if you start fucking her, like, they're, you're it's not, not going like, to, No, there's a baby it, there. You and, ruin everything. Yeah, you're you're right. You'd have to leave the town. Yeah. He would probably try to kill you. Bob? Yeah. Oh, Bob would try. Maybe. he poison you. Bob's pretty nice. Yeah. But, so then they're having dinner, I believe. Zora goes, hey, Bob, you got any snacks? And he goes, oh, yeah, no, go get whatever you want out of the store. Yeah. So he goes into the store and he's kneeling on the ground. He's down on the ground, man. And all of a sudden, Annie comes in, and she's got a sort of a dress on that I, I think buttons up all the way in the front, uh-huh. and it's mostly unbuttoned at the bottom. It's busted up on the top. You don't know it's her at first either, because you no. only see the bottom part. So she did take your way. Oh, Annie, Vas-y. Bouf, la mia. Bouf. <laughs> Grabs him by the fucking thick of it, puts his face in her crotch, and she goes, "Eat my pussy, eat my pussy," <laughs> and he's just like flailing about. I'm thinking, "Yes, eat that pussy." <laughs> Please, God, do it. Oh my God, <laughs> do it for all of us. We've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot. Do they start kissing a little bit? Yes. She kisses him. He gives in a little bit. And, and then, then he, he shoves her into a bin full of potatoes. Yeah, that's not good. Busts it up. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. I'm thinking, oh, no. This is what's going to happen here. Yeah, he's going to get in trouble for her attacking her. Yeah, and he's got to kill her. And then when they go back up to the dinner, that's when it really sinks into my mind. Like, you couldn't have done anything. You no. might already have a little bit of a smell on your face. Yes. <laughs> you could not get away with anything. No. Because the store is, like, right next door. Yeah. It's like, through a curtain. Even if you uh, fuck for 30 seconds, y'all are going to smell like you've been fucking. And she's going to be louder than shit. Oh, oh she's, she's going to be getting it the way she wants it, man. Yep. She's going to be going bananas. She's going to be singing the praises. Yes. Uh, Julian, that was uh, very hot. <laughs> yeah. That's some, like, Barbara Crampton-level holy fuck. Fuck. I, Here we go. I loved it. Yeah. I wanted more of it. Uh, I really liked how aggressively she was telling him to eat it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. She was like, I smell fresh meat. So this whole time, nothing comes from the book. They do. He gets a rejection letter. They go to the guy's house. He doesn't know that's where she's taking him. I think that's a while ago. That's when they were it still was. with Lisa and Eddie. It's worth mentioning, though. She flips out on this dude and grabs a comb from that fell from her person cuts his face and it's an unpleasant slash yeah it looks like it hurts mm-hmm. but you're also like oh, well seven stitches you'll heal no i wouldn't think that that's what he's but he said that's what he said officer right. says he got seven so stitches. she gets arrested yeah and he's talking to the cop who's a real cool dude he, yeah he just he wants this guy to help him get his book published well right because he's like fuck man your wife or whatever and he goes yeah i'm a writer he goes oh I don't know. Let's talk words. I'll not, I won't let you read this. Do you like book? I'm going to put it down in front of you. It's tied up with a bow. He keeps touching it, drinking with him. 
And then eventually he's like, all right, get the fuck out of here. Because then he goes to the guy's house again, pushes him down, and basically threatens him with violence if he doesn't drop the charges against Betty. I don't care that you don't like my book and you said very mean things about my book. I do not care. Betty is my life. Mm -hmm. I have no reason to live without her and I'll kill anybody. Oh, and here's another thing. Throughout the entire movie, when people are on the phone, someone else just reaches over and grabs an earpiece. That's something that never existed, I don't think, in America. That all happened. He does eventually get a letter, I think. A phone call from a publisher that is after terrible things have happened though that's after the big thing oh really yeah. oh he does one night try to write and he can't do it and then one night he does a bu- he runs into the guy from alien 4 and yeah. he sells him cocaine <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he does a little bit of it from delicatessen in the city of lost children see this is what i was thinking because he takes betty home and she's like i'm tired and he goes oh fuck i'm thinking oh not no. tonight not tonight baby it's gonna go over to bob's wife oh you think so that's what i was thinking <laughs> or she'd pop by and he's raging but he sits down and he writes i guess something else i couldn't live i couldn't live next door to bob's wife no i couldn't live in a town knowing she exists <laughs> and the bob he's giving it to her but she says he keeps like slipping it in when he from behind and he doesn't, he doesn't care whether she's she's a, awake or asleep. Yeah, I mean he sounds like a bad lover. It sounds uh, rapey. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking in the butt. You can get it. I know, but I'm just thinking: is this a translation thing? But I don't think so. She doesn't. That's, <laughs> that's not where she wants. Oh, I guess maybe that's why she's not satisfied. It just keeps coming in her ass. Now, Zork and Betty do go back. I noticed you're covering your eye. Is that any reason for that? Oh, my God. Zorg and Betty do go back to see Lisa and Eddie at one point, right? They come to see them, I thought. Because they go, oh, oh, I'm sorry. So at some point she thinks she's pregnant. Oh, yeah. But then she's not. This is the beginning of the trouble. And then she shows up and she's just her makeup smeared all over her face and her hair is now a bad wig. This is like a very fascinating, scary moment because he sees her face and we only see the back of her head and yeah. he is so perturbed. She's the Joker. Here, yeah, and her hair's... She's the crow and the Joker. She's the croaker. Croker. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, her bad Franca Potente wig. And I'm like, oh, now she really looks like Franca Potente. Mm-hmm. She did earlier, but now right here specifically. Then they, I was like, man, she's not going to look good with short hair. But then they cut her hair. She and looks it looks great. terrible. Oh. Oh. I mean, I, I, I thought she still looked very pretty. <laughs> At some point, she tells him that she's hearing voices. Tout en des voix. And she's not pregnant. They do go back to see Lisa and Eddie. She falls into the water, but then she's actually having a good time. And Eddie's like, you know, you got to do something, man. And he goes, I just want to save her. And then he almost beats Bob to death. And Bob's like, I got well, I got my wife's hot in the pants. Yours is crazy. What the fuck? Yeah. You'll never talk about my wife this way. Yeah. I don't have to say it in an accent. I can just say it normal. God damn it. I'll allow you to say that once, Aiden Quinn. But next time... You're not my brother. Yep. Bob. Yep. <laughs> um, Bob's a cool guy, though. I like Bob. I think Bob's... Bob's a good friend, too. Yeah. Bob comes through in a pinch when he needs to deliver that piano because the piano guy's dipped out. Yep. Also, that brings in the local police. Yes. who At one point, Betty Blue punches through a, a window. glass window on one of their doors. Yep. And she runs off into the city like a lunatic, and the police show up, and she's covered in blood and the young officer points a gun at him mm-hmm. mustache La, le mustache. That's le mustache he rolls out of the car the car comes screeching oh, up and he dives out i'm like what is going on here he's memorably fantastic in this and then the older cop i felt like he was gonna bust up zorg yeah he's like i'm gonna f- oh you're a friend of eddie oh, you know eddie ah Ah, you should have said your friend of Eddie. A paisan, no. And he almost kills the younger officer. Okay, so she thinks she's going to have a baby. She doesn't have the baby. Yep. They hang out with Eddie and Lisa. Uh, she's weird, but eventually they go back to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, where are we rocketing but off But then to? they go to a fair 
And he, even though she has a full plate of ice cream, which she's eating off of a leaf, uh-huh. he goes, you want another ice cream? And she goes, yes, please. And so he goes to get another ice cream. And then all of a sudden she absconds with a child. Oh, oh, uh, he robs a, a armored truck dressed as a woman. I thought that was Eddie. I wanted to ask you about this. I never thought that was Eddie. I knew it was him, but like, why? For money? Where does that money go? It never comes into play. He just like robs them. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. He just goes, she goes, I hear voices. And then he takes it upon himself, I guess, to somehow plan and pull off an armor car heist. To like. With violence. He shoots a guy. Yeah, in the leg. And puts the gun in his mouth. <sighs> Suck it. <laughs> grind <laughs> and, uh, but the boy they didn't put him in his mouth and grind we wanted them to there's a young boy yeah who's on dispatch I think uh-huh. and he's just looking at porno magazines and then old uh, Zorg comes in and that Zorgina and, and lady huh? Z- what do you call her Zorgina Zorgita yeah yeah that's he a good name comes in and he's just like oh yeah fuck yeah she's slapping him well I mean he's She's got the gun on him immediately. Yeah. He goes, yes, take me with you or whatever. Please just tell me your name. I need to know your name. I have to jack off to you later. I have to have a name for you. I'll tell you everything. Don't worry about it. And she ties him up, and he's just like, uh. And she slaps him (laughs) a little bit more. And then the the truck guys come in. She shoots the biggest guy in the foot, puts the gun in his mouth. They tie you themselves up. And then Zorgina takes couple hundred thousand dollars from a bag i guess and then writes valentina christina i don't know on the kid's hand with a heart and gives him a wad of cash and kind of unties him and he just looks at it and he just goes oh (laughs) (laughs) i have the power (laughs) yeah uh and then yeah he just goes home and he's like oh hey i stole all this money um let's go to a fair but then I guess she takes a wad of it because she bribes the toy store to allow her to sit with the stolen child in the teepee. Payé, monsieur. Betty, qu'est-ce que tu fais là? I think I was too confused about what was happening towards the. I, th- I think I, I think I zoned out for a small chunk due to its three-hour runtime. Well, because yeah, the, the mother comes up because he comes back with the ice cream. He goes, Betty, Betty. And the mom goes, hey, my son was with your that lady that you were with. What's going on? And he just goes, shit, and grabs his jacket and starts running. And she goes, stop that man. That man is bad news. That guy stole my boy. And then she chases them eventually to the toy store. He goes, Betty, we got to go. And they run up to the roof and then jump across the gap. And she almost falls to her death, but he grabs her and lifts her up. That doesn't happen. No. <laughs> and then they go down another set of stairs to the street and they're just running away. And so now he's like, okay, I don't know. Things are good, maybe. And then he comes home and he trips over Bob. And Bob's cleaning up a big pool of blood. And there's yeah. blood all over the apartment. Bob killed his girlfriend. And uh, Bob goes, oh, shit, man. But he uh, cut out one of her eyeballs. She went, what was that rapper's name? Slick Rick? He went crazy in a hotel and cut out his eye and tried to jump out the window. Two chains? Houston made headlines in 2005 when he attempted suicide in a London hotel room and later gouged his eye out with a fork on the 13th floor of his hotel building. Is that know. true? Yeah. Didn't Bushwick Bill? Not two chains, Wasn't he but crazy too? Yeah, he went nuts. So she's in the psych hospital now. And they don't explain like what the incident was that happened. Bob's just trying to clean up the blood. Did you think her body was in the bathroom when he went in there and looked? I thought she just killed herself. Yeah, I thought she was dead. But Bob goes, no, she cut out her eyeball. And they took her away. Because he drove by as the ambulance was going away. So he runs over to the thing. um, And the nurse is like, oh, sorry, this visiting hours are over. And then she goes, okay, well, just go on for a little bit. And he goes in and she's just super sedated. She wanted to be sedated and she is now. Talk to me like a Betty Blue. Hey, Betty, why are you looking weird with one eye? Because the other one's got a patch. <laughs> <laughs> and the nurse goes, all right, man, you got to leave. And he goes, fuck this. And then some orderlies grab him. No. He goes to see the doctor the next day, maybe. And the guy's like, drops like 25 pills on the desk. He goes, this is all the junk she's on. Because uh, she's like comatose. She's 98 years old. She needs these 14 pills to... 
keep her going, but then these 28 pills to counter effect the first 14. Yep. And he goes, this is bullshit. I'm taking her out of here. And he goes, nah. And then the orderlies come and throw him out, tear his jacket. One guy's like, I'm going to bust you up if you don't leave. Mm. So what does he do next? He comes back later. As Zorg- Zorgito? Yeah. That was the name, right? <laughs> it's like 8, 9 o'clock at night. I was like, yeah. what?" It, she he, walks right in. Yeah. And the, the orderlies. Looks like she's dressed to kill. That he fought with. Are playing kick the can out yeah. there, and he just walks by them. So they're there in the morning, and they're now there at sundown. Yeah, they work two week in a row shifts. <laughs> you know, when you say dress to kill, Michael Caine was looking way more fly than That's fucking true. Zorgita. <laughs> Zorgita is fucked Zorgita up. Zorgita looks like fucking Don McKellar in a wig. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I would still fuck Zorgita, but I'm <laughs> saying Zorgita's not at the top of the list. Uh huh. So he. But, but definitely on the list. <laughs> I watched too many horny uh, movies. So he just walks right in. Nobody gives a fuck. No, but it's a lady. It's not a threat. Yeah. And, um. <clears throat> new it's doctor. Like, it's like, damn, Betty, uh. She's strapped down now. Although we've come. To the end, end of the, the road. road. Yeah. Sometimes just... sometimes you know the songs and I don't know the songs. And I, I stare at you, but then I realized. You got it. But Betty is strapped down. She's, yeah. Like she has been a problem. Oh, that's what happens. He cuts her up earlier. Cuts the straps up earlier. And they go, you can't do that. And oh, That's that why when... they throw him out. Okay. So now he loosens the straps slightly. C- cradles her head. What and then he, he fucking to jerks come, her the hell down. Come with me one more time or yeah. something? Hit me, baby, one more time. Honestly, after he cuts the straps and he's cradling her, he his hand her does go stuff. under the covers when the nurse comes in. So, yes, you need to leave, sir. Right. I, although. <laughs> okay. In 2024, <laughs> I find this wildly inappropriate. But they had such a wildly sexually charged relationship. Sure. That I can see, and I'm not condoning what He's trying he to jumpstart her. He's trying to bring her back. Hey, Betty Blue, these are the things. Betty, Betty, these are the things we used to do. Which I'm glad you said, because I think I need to make a point of notice here. Mm-hmm. So he just grabs a, he straps her back down, grabs a pillow, and he starts smothering her. Yeah. Did you think at some point early in the process, especially when she's um, jerking, that you'd maybe lift the pillow to see if that. You cool? Revitalized her brain. Put the pillow back. Shocked her like, holy shit, I'm awake now. What the yeah. hell? Yeah. Well, I mean, he doesn't I think... stop to find out. He just kills her. Yeah. The body fights, man. The body doesn't want to go down. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is maybe that fight or flight adrenaline will shock her back into coherency. No. Maybe you want to, huh? No? Okay. Right. Because if she's still a catatonic, then stopping. Right. But he kills her. And uh, And he sings End of the Road by Boys to Men 10 years before the song comes up. Yep. And the librarian goes, shh. Mm -hmm. And um, he walks home. And then he sees Bob and uh, Annie Annie arguing through the pane of clear glass on their front door. Mm -hmm. He's, He's jerking it. I didn't know what to expect. He reaches through and cradles their heads. And... And they're just, she goes, you don't want to fuck me, but you have all these affairs. And he doesn't deny it. I think he's like, nah. <sighs> Do you think he's slinging dick around town? I wouldn't have gotten any, um, nothing I had seen would suggest that that would even be remotely possible. The only lady that comes by is the lady that you wouldn't probably want to do that with. The like and six year old grandma? Yeah. Tell yeah. Bob I'll be back. I think he's just had a baby. I mean, mm-hmm. she just had the baby, but they have a new baby. They have another lives. kid, too. One month ago. They have, like, a younger, an older boy. Yeah. Hold on. <coughs> That's, like, six when he's in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. And he's running a shop. You know people are coming by at all hours of the night mm-hmm. in that town? In that town. If she if she, if she was uh, my wife, I'd eat it. <laughs> like, just like she asked. I think he just needs to, like, fuck her for a week and then she'll calm down and go back to normal. he probably just finger her in a real erotic way. Like, with little, little kisses on the lips? No, no, no. You're, like, nibbling on her neck. Oh. In her nipples. 
and caressing the back of her head, keeping her aloft mm-hmm. while you're oil candles and saxophone music. This is what you want? We doing bonus. Okay, so that's the movie. Uh, oh, so yeah. Then he goes back to the kitchen and he starts writing. And there's a cat there. And then it's just a hard cut to blue overtone and terrible music. And the movie's over. The cat does speak to him in Betty's voice, though. It's just like, oh my God. Yeah, and he speaks to the cat. And the cat's like, looks at the camera like. What it, uh, What do you What do you think about the movie? Man, it is a pretty solid film all around. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly well made. Yeah, it's beautiful <laughs> to look at. It's the scene. Not often is, exciting, but yeah, when they're like up overlooking the town, driving in the hills, it's mm-hmm. amazing looking. the The beachside stuff in the beginning is beautiful looking. The fucking yellow Mercedes. This is a wildly gorgeous movie. Yeah, the director just died two years ago. Oh. Yep. Almost made it to hear us talk about <laughs> it. Yeah. And uh, um, I, I thought Betty was at times the weakest character. Man, there's some really s- solid stuff in here. I don't. What do you want from Betty? Because I feel like she seems like a young lady who's in love and then slowly gets a little crazy. Until no, no, she's insane. I, I mean, it's just the character. I just don't like this young bratty. Especially because I watched this after Trust, and I had had my brat meter was filled. Don't don't talk about it yet. So I'm, 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 uh, ready. I'm ready for you. But not to say that her performance was bad or anything. No. I mean, she's fucking laying it out to bear. And we say Eddie is the best. Absolutely. Eddie Eddie should have five more movies with that character. Absolutely. We love him, Eddie. I bet you're dead too, but boy, you were good in this. He looks like uh, Alex What's-His-Face from Girls. As a general rule, I try not to date women that are under 25 uh. or that have been at one point in their life penetrated by a drummer. But, man, yeah, it's the music's great. Mm-hmm. It's not obnoxiously 80s. <laughs> No, it's very lush at times, and but they, yeah, it's all appropriate. They tricked us. They made us. It seemed timeless. It's incredibly well made <laughs> movie that happens to have an, uh, an incredible amount of nudity. Yeah, I think it's trying to portray passion, mm-hmm. and it does. It does. It's not gratuitous, really, or it would be happening all the time. No, nor is it, uh, you know, like a manual. But I feel like that opening fuck scene, <clears throat> fuck scene, yeah. that really like pulls you into the movie and shows you. What a strong uh, sexual relationship yeah, yeah. they have! This wild attraction for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's like not gratuitous. It's not filthy. It's it's very passionate. Pretty great. Yeah, it. I mean, three hours and eight minutes. You know, is a is a uh, a tough act. It's, ask. It's aggravating. It's so long, but also, but it's fuck, good to spend time with the characters. Yeah, and I couldn't imagine what the uh, uh, theatrical release what what would have it omitted yeah. that i'm sure they w- would have been fine without it but um what do you, what's your number for the movie for the movie fuck shit i didn't even think about this beforehand at all um but right now thinking about it uh fuck i honestly i think i gotta give it a seven yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i was gonna say i wouldn't <laughs> give it an eight but seven definitely. yeah i mean it's a great movie <laughs> it's a good fucking movie yeah what do you give it on a boner scale uh primarily because of that one two punch mm-hmm. um i <laughs> have five oh to ten yeah really yeah is that too low for you <clears throat> i didn't well, find much of the other stuff like arousing but um visually striking i mean i i, I will give it a seven out of ten on the boner scale because when that the particular scene we talked about the, f- the 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 way that it just got me in that moment where mm-hmm. I was like, holy fuck. Mm-hmm. And the way that I've thought about it since. I will say that I did watch the part where she's doing it to her breast with his hand three times. Mm-hmm. I saw it and I was like, oh, what? Rewound it. And then I was like, holy cow. And then I rewound it again and I didn't go far enough. So I had to go back a little bit more. And I was like. It's pretty great, man. This is fantastic. I'll give it 7 out of 10 on the boner scale. You say 5? Yeah. It, that scene alone, I'd give an eight. That combo scene, but in the context of the boner throughout the entire movie, I'm going to give it a five. Okay, what would you, you said eight for that specific yeah. moment? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty legit. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Betty Blue, thank you for being a good movie. I, I appreciate yeah. you for being good. Well done. Yeah.
incredibly well done. Good character study. Mm -hmm. Good tale. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Unique. We'll see you next month with a new one. I don't know what it's going to be. Jules gets to pick this time. Okay. We're alternating. Why don't you check us out on the Now Playing Network at nowplayingnetwork.net. They got some other podcasts on there. Director's Club. Say the one. Uh, tracks are the damned. <laughs> That's right. Those fucking tracks. Uh, you can also give us a call at 763-634-1897. Yeah. Email us at uh, wedoingfilmographies at gmail.com. Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, mm -hmm. Instagram. We do oh. filmographies. Uh, you can review We Doing Filmographies because that's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and also We Doing Boners on Apple Podcast. Yeah, because this is audio also. And then but if you watch the video, you, you, get, you get to see some blurred out horny. Yeah, but if you leave a review, you can for the audio pick a movie for We Doing Filmographies. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, just tell us a, b a good boner too, and we'll add it to the list. Maybe. Yeah, you just let us know. Because we, you know, we're just going by, we're not picking these necessarily. And if you if you message uh, in the Instagram account or the email, I'll respond to you. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing going on. Yep. I'm fucking raising kids, editing videos and audio. Mm -hmm. Fucking nothing. Mm -hmm. Forty one, and I got nothing going on. Forty two when this comes out. Yeah, forty four when then this comes out for me. We'll see you in November with a new movie. I've been Jason. And I've been Jules. And we, we doing had some boners. boners. <laughs> <laughs> One for you too, is that what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go smoke. You wanna eat your funions? Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs>